Hello everybody, thanks for having me. How are we all doing? Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about changing your horizon, and I'm going to do it by way of two main strands of thought. The first is my life, and the second is video games. And I'm doing it this way because I am the undisputed world expert in my life, and video games have been my constant companion throughout. Before I get started, can anyone tell me what a roguelike is? No, Dr. Ryan, I'm going to tell you. A roguelike is a type of video game that features levels that are procedurally and randomly generated. In roguelikes, the playable character suffers from permadeath, meaning that you have to start over from some predetermined starting point if you ever die in the game. To put it really, really simply, roguelikes force you to learn their systems through the cost of failure. So with that said, we'll get started. Part number one, horizons established for you. From a really young age, we are told where we're going, broadly speaking. Depending on where you are born in the genetic lottery, you're probably told you're going to go to school, and you're going to go to university, and then you're going to go to work, and then who knows? That's just the way life goes sometimes. Take me for an example. I was born in 1989 in the southeast of England, which is a middle class enclave of the country. But my parents were born about 35 years before me in the northwest of England, a former industrial working class part of the country, and their experiences dictated where I went to school. And where I went to school broadly pushed me towards going to university. And the fact that I went to university at all means that I was probably going to a career of work of the mind. And this is fine, there's nothing wrong with this. It's what most parents in Europe have aspired for their children since the end of World War II, a roundabout. And I have gladly conformed to their plan set in motion years or decades before I was even born. Okay? So, with that said, what I'm going to do today is talk about how I have changed that in the world of work and if it has benefited me along the way. The reason I'm going to talk about roguelikes and video games at the same time is because roguelikes like me have been around since the 1980s, which not many people in this room can say the same of. Some people can. Roguelikes began with games like Rogue and NetHack originating in the genre, but I'm going to talk about one specific game today alongside my life journey. And that game is Supergiant Hades. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Hades. Oh, some when like kids have. That's good news. In Hades, you are tasked as the playable character of escaping the Grecian underworld, meeting friends, families, and enemies constantly over your many, many attempts to escape. And none of us here, thankfully, are doing anything quite as dramatic as trying to escape the Grecian underworld. However, like I've already said, we're all traveling a relatively fixed route, knowing where we're going towards a vague horizon. Okay? Recognizing change. I put to you that the first step in changing your horizon is recognizing that horizons exist at all. I'll paint you a picture to demonstrate. In, London, in 2012, London was in a pretty good place. The Olympics were just coming around the corner, Brexit didn't exist, and I was 23, and was therefore awesome. <laughs> I had moved to London 18 months previously to study a postgraduate in theatre directing at a drama school. And I attended thinking that all my horizons were opening up in front of me. I naively or foolishly, but I still stand by, kind of reasonably, thought this was the first step on a major theatrical career towards satisfaction and stardom, easily. I had been aching to be let into a school like this, and I attended with all that in mind. The same kind of thing happens to you in Hades, as you take your first steps into the dungeons of Tartarus, trying to reach the surface. But, unfortunately, I was misinformed. Immediately upon graduating from my drama school, I didn't get any closer to my horizon, it just got further away, as new goals replaced old ones. The same is, in, in, same is true in Hades. You might have had a sneaking suspicion that you, the player, would beat the game first time, walk straight to the surface and get out. However, after three or four attempts of being knocked back, you were confronted with the cold, hard fact that there is nothing left to do apart from knuckle down and literally die trying to achieve your goal. 
It hits home really hard in the game where you end up back at the beginning every time you fail. In life, it wasn't as grim as all that. They didn't have to die to go through it. And there were some successes. Sometimes I'd get a job and that would be good. But my horizon was still there. It just it stayed there, unchanging grim, sitting there. However, in 2017, I made a decision. And against well-intentioned advice from friends and colleagues, and after saving and thinking about it for a while, I decided to leave London and go for a year of travel around the world. So, over that course of that year, I saw 20 countries across four continents and thousands of unforgettable horizons. And what that literal change of my lifestyle did was allow me the chance to see that I could make a change to my horizon. The change in context gave me that rare ability to recognize change. Part three of my speech is called Getting Started. And I quite like the fact that in a speech about changing your horizons, the start comes squarely in the middle. It feels like a nice detail and a cyclical kind of vibe. In terms of getting started, I now have recognized change, but I had to think about change to what? It demands you kind of start again in some shape or form. And this is a scary thought. In Hades, you just get given a new weapon or a new gift from the gods. But in life, it wasn't that simple. Most people would say, although a lot of you are younger than this, that having to relearn things in your late 20s or much, much later is a really scary prospect when you feel that you need to learn things. And the world makes you feel that you should have learned when you were 18 or even younger. But that is what you have to do, I know from experience. I taught a little bit through my decade of being a freelance theatre director, mostly at university, teaching students who were a few years younger than me about developing their writing and creating and staging drama. But now that I changed my horizons, I knew I needed to change that as well. And as a result, I decided to leave the UK and become a teacher. But this time, a proper teacher working to a timetable rather than a rehearsal schedule. Just to say, rehearsal schedules for theatre start at 10 a.m. Every morning, no exceptions. So learning a brand new career, as well as arriving into a building at 7.30 a.m., is a big, big challenge for me. I had spent 10 years living on a normal person's schedule, no teaching for me. With that said, it's very similar in Hades. You have to just start learning new things, adapting to the game, looking for new ways to engage with the product. You no longer start playing the game looking for immediate gratification. You don't go into the game thinking, I'm definitely going to win this. You put your faith in the ideas that your skills improving just a little bit is a prize worth playing for. The point of this section of getting started is starting something new is not something to be ashamed of. It has to be celebrated, not least by yourself. This moves us on to the next stage, engaging. With this, new, with this new start, you have to engage honestly and openly with your new role. What that might mean is like Hades. You do eventually, after 100 hours, escape the underworld, and you reach the outside and the ancient Greek world. But ridiculously and amazingly, and for those of you who have played it, I hope you'll back me up, you, you find yourself wanting to go back into the game, to get better still, to learn more, and to develop the story and your understanding of it. Honestly and authentically engaging with the world is a key part of changing your horizons. For me, as a teacher, that meant taking on new challenges. The best example I can think of is finding myself on a as a coach on the sidelines, because I spent 12 years of my childhood years being an absolute nightmare for those tasked with coaching me. Even more obviously, engaging authentically has led me to saying yes and giving this TEDx speech. It is a crucial part of changing your horizons and moving forward. With all that said, it's very ironic that the final thing I can say about this is that you can always redo this. Changing again, if you want to. All of this means that you can change your horizons at any stage, if you want to. The crucial point here for the vast majority of the audience is probably 80-20 split 
between high school age students is that you can always do this. You guys are in the very first stage of this cycle. You are being told you have to go to school, you've got to get the good grades, you've got to go to the best universities, you've got to make all the right decisions. You've got to be the best you can possibly be in every single arena of your life. All in the service of searching for a horizon that you didn't necessarily choose. Now, most of you, I would wager, will probably end up graduating from QD or Wenline and graduating from university and finding that you guys quite like the horizon that's been put in front of you. The reason for that is because your parents probably knew it was a good horizon. However, knowing that it can be changed is tantalizing, and I might even say galvanizing. So, if, even if you are the person who thinks you will find the right horizon, knowing that is a crucial part. You can always make this change. For those who don't think that they will continue on the horizon that's been set out for you, I urge you to use this speech in one of two ways. If you don't buy what I've said, then just treat me as a cautionary tale. If you do buy what I've said, use this, this speech and embrace all the new horizons in whatever form they come. That might mean taking the road less travelled, working with others that you normally wouldn't, or just fighting till you go down. Because the main point is... Oh, I've missed it. You can always start a new game.